Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tommy, and welcome back to another episode of First Look. Now, if it's your first time here, just know that your wallet is going to hate me. I'm here to show you a quick sneak peek at the something. Maybe you wanna use it for your next build. I don't know, so let's just jump straight into it. Motors. Now, for those of you guys who are familiar with the Hype Train line, the V2 of the popular 2306 line, here it is, check it out. The Drib, as you know, likes to rock that higher KV. This is that 2650 KV right here, 2306 size stator. The obvious change here is that new bell design. Now it still has that iconic tri-spoke design, but as you can see, it is no longer up and above. It is actually down and flush with the top of that bell now. And the reason why we did this is because to just increase the durability, as you may or may not know, we like to push our stuff hard. Sometimes we hit into something really hard. Having it designed this way has definitely increased its durability. So check that out. This is the Dribs Edition. Obviously, we also have the Acro version of this, which is the standard 2450 KV. And we can't go without the Yamagata Edition, which is 2150 KV, rated for that 5S, or maybe you like to rock that six inch. This is the motor to get, guys. For the 2150 KV, it does have the single windings. Just does a little bit better performance at managing heat, especially when you're pushing that 5S. All the rest of them are rocking that multi-strand. A little bit more efficient, according to my man LeDrib, a little bit more durable, so check those out. Adding up to that new Hype Train line is a 2207, 2450 KV. Still has that iconic bell design. What I like about this is because it's a little bit taller, we were able to give it a little bit more lip on that bell. And that's just really coming from a car guy. Like I really like rims on a car that has that lip, has a little bit of that concave look. Let's check out how much this thing weighs because I'm actually not sure. Full length wiring on there with the prop nut. We are looking at 35, 36 grams. So if you take off a little bit of that wiring, it will get a little bit lighter. Now these do make some serious power and it's still smooth because you know that's what we're all about, trying to keep that freestyle cinematic smooth that's going on. So check that out, but I do want to bring your attention to this super sexy motor from my man Stinger Swarm. Look at this thing, man. This thing is just, why would you even want to fly with this? I just want to just like hang it around my neck and just start flossing everybody. Be like, yo, check out this motor on my neck. You know what I'm saying? My man Stinger Swarm coming out with the 2150 KV because he is all about that 5S also. Obviously, if this is rocking 5S, it would also be a great motor for uh, six inch props as well. So check that out. So let's jump along. Let's go to this guy right here, Immersion RC. Now this is their next version of their power meter. Now you might be wondering what the heck is a power meter? Maybe you're already familiar with it. If you are a race director, maybe you manage the flight line and you do a couple races and you need to just make sure that all of your people on the flight deck is in check with their VTX milliwatts because some places require 25 milliwatts, some places 200. This is an obvious tool that you should have, but maybe you're not into races. This is still a very useful tool to have because I don't know about you, but I've had plenty of instances where my VTX just starts to go bad. Maybe you're going like 30 feet out and all of a sudden I'm starting to get some video noise and you're like, you know what? This thing was good yesterday. Why is it giving me issues today? This is the tool that you're gonna wanna use to figure that out because you can take this. This is the SMA adapter. You screw it on here. Take that other side, screw it on your VTX, and now you can get a power readout and you can figure out if your VTX is putting out the power that it should be. And it's also super helpful because I've also had instances where my VTX is putting out 200 milliwatts on A1, but then you go over to like A6 or just some other channel and all of a sudden the power just drops off. So this is a super useful tool to figure out, troubleshoot your VTX, see if it's dying. Maybe you could just keep add a little bit more life to it by moving to another channel. Super useful. It also has this other mode. Obviously a direct connection to your VTX is going to give you the most accurate results, but you could also use it in a wand mode. And with the wand mode, you use this little antenna, screw it on like so. You could just be wanding this thing around. You could be like, where are you at? Boop. Figure that out really quick. Now you might be wondering, okay, what what's up with the Rotorite Edition? But the Rotorite Edition comes with these two extra adapters. One for MMCX because that seems to be becoming more popular now. And the other one for UFL, which is also very popular. Get the Rotorite Edition. It's the same price uh, and you just, you get this, the extra connectors. So it, it's just do yourself a favor. That's what you're going to want to do. Next up is from Hobbywing. My first introduction with Hobbywing. 
was with their X Rotor flight controller stack, their first version. I still use it to the same day. It's still in my remix, although it's like on remix like number like eight. It is a super, super robust flight controller. So I'm super excited that they came out with the V2 and let's go through some of the changes. First of all, let's look at this packaging because Hobby Wing arguably has some of the nicest packaging around here. So let's take that out. We got the flight controller, we got the ESCs. It comes with miscellaneous connectors. It comes with the XT60 connector, which I love it. Capacitor and some mounting hardware. So let's move on to the actual flight controller itself. It looks like they have added soft mounting, which is awesome because before that it didn't you had to figure out your own soft mounting and solutions all right the first version used hard pins to mount the flight controller to the esc stack and now while i never had any issues with that i have heard of some people where that pin connection has worked its way loose but for v2 they have decided to go with uh, these connectors so you use these connectors you connect one on there, you connect the other one there, and bam, you are pretty much done. And I'm a big fan of that because these connectors are pretty rock solid. Other improvements for V2. The ESCs is now rated for 45 amps, and whereas the previous version was BL Heli S, these are BL Heli 32, arguably the new standard now. The one thing that I like about these BL Heli 32 ESCs is that you can actually customize them so that the startup sound has some type of custom sound. Mine does the Super Mario Mushroom Power Up sound. You can go online and, and basically find your favorite ringtone, even though it's not really a ringtone, and uh, flash whatever you want on here. Not only is it rated for 45 amps, now constant, but it is also rated for 6S, and with 6S, 5S, really starting to gain a lot of adoption. A very, very good thing to be looking out for when you're looking for a new flight controller slash ESC stack. So check that out. Bam! ISDT. And they came in with a whole bunch of different chargers. And now, just recently, they came out with this D2 smart charger. Now, you really want to try and just minimize your footprint every time you're traveling. And before I got this, I use this personally, I used to lug around my big, uh, you know, 408 uh, charger. There's this big, huge thing about this big and I had to lug around a separate power supply. Enter this guy. It's nice, small, compact. It's got the power supply built in, so all you need is just literally what you see here. And it's got two channels. So you could be charging your batteries on one side, you could be charging your radio battery, maybe your goggle battery on the other side. And the kicker, I might be charging my cell phone, I might be charging my vlog cam battery. To do that, it's got this pretty sweet USB port right here, rated for five volts, obviously but it's rated for two amps. So it's actually putting some pretty decent current. So check that out, ISDT D2, awesome charger. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, the headliner for this episode, the Nirvana radio. Now this is gonna be the first time that I see this. I've seen pictures online. It's already out there, it's available. You guys can check it out, but this is gonna be my first time. So I'm, I'm actually gonna do a little bit more of an unboxing for this. Look at that. I like I like the presentation. Huh? Look at that. Nice presentation. Oh, and we got stickers. First of all, take a look at that. I like that. That's pretty fancy right there. That's like that titanium burnt, you know, neochrome color. It's really nice to see that this is actually bigger than I thought. And and that's not a bad thing. Wow, look at that. So that whole you know, neochrome look continues itself all the way to the back. Let's take out this top cover and let's just uh, let's see what it looks like. I gotta do the, I gotta just see what the, I pinch and I feel like, you know, not all radios work very well for pinching, but this is, this is not bad. I'd say that this is not bad. So if you're a pincher, this is probably what your, your grip is going to look like, um, which is really, this is super helpful to have this right here. In fact, I think they did that. Oh no. Well, I guess it worked for, uh, for thumbs as well. That's a really nice resting area. I really dig that. But this is probably where I'm gonna be at as a pincher. Now these gimbals feel good, but I do feel like they're way too loose uh, for my taste. So if it were me, I'd go back there and just adjust the tension on it. But it feels pretty good. The throw feels really good. It doesn't feel overly large. I really like this right here. I am a little worried. Ah, no, you know what? It's just a momentary, so that's not. I'm not that worried. I was originally worried that maybe I might flick one of these switches, but as long as you don't map any of these switches to anything important, or maybe you're a thumber, so it's not that important, it's not gonna be a big deal, but check it out. This is also a touch screen, as I understand it, and the interface is actually OpenTX, so it should be fairly 
similar or familiar to anybody running FR Sky, not to be mistaken by Fly Sky. So Fly Sky is the actual protocol for here. And from what I hear, the Fly Sky protocol is a little bit faster uh, than the FR Sky protocol. And uh, it also has all of the provisions here to mount a crossfire. It's got the, uh, the pinouts right there so that you can mount a crossfire or other module on the back. Uh, it uses 18650 batteries that go down over here, which is actually pretty cool. So now, you know, 18650s being a common battery size, you can actually just pop them right in, no modifications necessary. Oh, okay, so it can't, and it does come with a receiver, so let's take a look at that. I mean, one of the things that I definitely look at when I'm looking at radios is what is the size of receivers. This looks like a diversity and or telemetry receiver, but check this out, it's also got this little guy, so it looks like the do have satellite receivers or smaller receivers that you can use. Yeah, there you go, that's more like it. So check that out. This is the Nirvana radio from Underground FPV. That is the end of today's episode of First Look. If there's anything in here that interests you, leave it down in the comments. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this guy right here. This is uh, a new player in the radio game and I like that. I like that because there's competition. Competition drives innovation. Innovation means good things for us. My name is Tommy. See you guys on the next one.